I'd like to draw upon my own life experience a bit today in terms of the Sunday message. And sometimes it's very appropriate for a, some autobiographical input for uh, the teachings. And I'm hoping that what I share with you today will be uh, applicable to your own life. I think it will. When I was developing some ideas for this message, I recalled a, an occurrence back about 35 years ago. A good friend of mine was making it from San Diego to Sacramento on Interstate 5 in her car. And she, uh, there's a timing for the traffic in Los Angeles, as probably you know about Vancouver. but. Los Angeles traffic is about 10 times worse. But anyway, she was stuck in traffic and she was edging along with someone driving right next to her in another lane. And they were moving along at maybe a mile an hour. And uh, she decided to have her lunch. And so she opened up a uh, brown bag and started eating a tuna fish sandwich. And she looked over next to her and there was a, a man in the next car looking over at her, her, her and licking his lips. It's like, I'm hungry too. And the traffic was such that it was very, very, like I said, very slow. And she had the inspiration to stop her car and get out of the car and run over to his car and knock on the window and offer him a half of her sandwich. And he was taken back initially, but then he accepted it. And later I asked my friend, why did you do that? And she said, for the simple joy of it, to see the joy on his face of receiving half of a sandwich from a complete stranger on the freeway. I thought that was a beautiful example of moving out of personal self and definition to extend oneself with an expectation of joy. And when my wife and I moved to Cottonwood, Arizona, back in 2009, at first we didn't know what we were going to do. We were staying with my mom because she had just, well, we had just lost my brother to illness. And it took about two months for me to grieve and to feel and to recalibrate my life because of his death. But then there was this feeling of passion that arose within me. And we started to develop a work in Cottonwood. And the first Sunday we met in this very small room in the Healing Arts Center in Cottonwood and I bought seven chairs from Walmart and we had 73 people the first Sunday. Because I had lived there before and put the word out and people came. And we built conscious community. We built something. And I remember so many Sundays, people were touched and moved and inspired. Not so much about what I, what I was saying, that had some element to it, but by the spiritual community that was fostered, the joy that was brought about through the excitement of the message, the excitement of the truth of being. As Charles Fillmore, the co-founder of the Unity Movement, called it, and much like in, in Cottonwood, in Sedona area, it's only, the whole area is only about 
60,000 people. But there's over 4 million people every year that move through that whole area. Because of the beauty, because of the spiritualness of the land. And we found that the message really needed to be eclectic. It needed to include the indigenous teachings of the Hopi and the Navajo, the Celtic teachings, Christian mysticism, and a whole lot of other variances on a single theme. And that theme was the truth of being. So we're talking about the truth of, truth of being a bit today. And joy is an element of the truth of being. I submit to you and assert it with all my being that when our mind is quieted and our we bring our energy back to self and we cut ourselves from all of that which is not true, one of the key experiences of that outcome and process is joy. So I learned, we learned in Cottonwood that, and as well as here, there's huge diversity of teachings in Vancouver, that paths are many, but truth is one. There is one universal truth, as we say, one presence and one power, that animates and loves us and desires to include us into its consciousness, always. So the truth of being is beyond belief. The truth of being is beyond belief. And we have our most cherished beliefs that we have this time of year. And they're beautiful, they're wonderful. And yet my, I feel very, very deeply because I've had these experience of, experiences of what I call the Christ presence, that this one presence in one power is beyond belief. But it can be used or uses belief systems to express its liveliness, its truth. And I wanted to give you a, an example of what I'm talking about. Probably about... 20 years ago or so, I was in Encinitas, California, south of, of uh, or just north of San Diego. And I was in a self-realization fellowship um, chapel. And the monk was giving the teachings of self-realization fellowship, basically a belief system. And it was okay. But it wasn't, really, it wasn't really inspiring me. So at the end of the service, I left and went into the bookstore. And there was something that happened at that moment. I was looking through a little pamphlet, and there was a shift that happened in me. My heart blew open with love and joy and I had to leave because I started to weep uncontrollably and I remember leaving that chapel and walking down the sidewalk and that joy and that love increased and it increased and increased and I was walking down the sidewalk in absolute bliss absolute love And that was a seed that was planted within my consciousness to 
always remember, to always come back to the fact and truth that we operate within a mind field of beliefs and that all beliefs need to be honored and respected with the exception of when they're getting in our own way. A couple, three years ago, I was having a conversation with a young woman who said to me, I'm so confused, I don't know what to do. I'm a friend of mine was telling me how she loved Jesus so much. And I've been a Hindu and I've been a, I've studied the Wicca movement, which is nature, nature magic. And I've been in yoga for forever, but something is happening inside of me. I left Christianity years ago because of the restrictions and, and the dogma. But something is happening inside of me, in my heart, that is opening me to something else. Bruce, what do you think I should do? And I said, you need to listen to your heart. And I said, it's not necessarily about Jesus. It's not about religion. It's about something within you that's calling you to the truth of your being, to a greater level of manifestation of your life time. Because she was also a teacher. She coached people spiritually. But she didn't know what to do. She was torn. And I said, listen to your heart. Listen to your being. And it will instruct you. Joy will reveal itself to you. One of the wonderful things that my wife and I shared during our time in Cottonwood was that she would do, thank God, all of the constant contact work and uh, computer work and all of that. And she would write a weekly inspiration. And she wrote one about joy that I wanted to share with you. My wife is a deeply, deeply spiritual lady who I have been blessed to be with for the last 15 years. She writes this about joy. Greetings. There are two kinds of joy. The joy that erupts as a response to an external source, such as a reuniting with a loved one, hearing a beautiful piece of music, or viewing a color-washed sunrise. And then there is also inner joy, the joy that bubbles up from inside with no source other than the wellspring of the soul in the celebration of being. What is, what is joy if not the celebration of all the ways that God is present in nature, in smiles of our loved ones, in heartfelt communion with the expression and the source of all? True joy is felt in the heart and radiates outward. Frequently, I'm in, when I'm in the process of classes or instructing people, I'll ask, what wants to be born? What wants to be born in this moment in your life? Because people 
We all go through so much. And this season is a mixed bag, is it not, with the traditions of, of all the good and the food and all the wonderful things of showing love to each other. But there's another level of joy, as my wife pointed to. And I wanted to share that point of view. And I'm in good company today because what I want to share is from a man named Eckhart Tolle. He talks about joy. I'd like to share it with you. And I'm sharing it with you because something is arising in human consciousness that is beyond the beliefs of the mind. It is beyond the traditions of the outer forms. It is something else that is occurring on the collective of the whole planet. <clears throat> Mr. Tully says, what is arising now is not a new belief system, a new religion, spiritual ideology or mythology. We are coming into the end, to the end, not only of mythologies, but also of ideologies and belief systems. The change goes deeper than the content of your mind, deeper than your thoughts. In fact, at the heart of the new consciousness lies the transcendence of thought, the newfound ability to rise above thought, of realizing a dimension within yourself that is infinitely more vast than thought. You then no longer derive your identity, your sense of who you are, from the incessant stream of thinking that in the old consciousness you take to be yourself. What a liberation to realize that the voice in the head is not who I am. Who am I then? The one that sees that the awareness that is prior to thought, the space in which the thought or the emotion or sense of perception happens. Last night I went to a concert at the Queen Elizabeth Theater. And it was it was filled with music. And it was it was good. But there was something that was missing for me. What was missing was the content around who and what we are as spiritual beings. There was an emphasis on accepting Jesus as your Lord and way sure. But there was something that was not feeding the deeper requirements of the soul. And I feel that that is my deepest function as a spiritual educator, to help us to remember who it, and what it is that we are as spiritual beings. And I like to tell the story of when I was back at Unity Village so many years ago, probably 40 years ago now, and I was standing in the courtyard and there was this, this feeling and knowing that came over me. That was joy. And it was an invitation to be in the truth of being. And it is a joy for me to share that, that great truth of the truth of being with you. 
and when the old falls away. Think about it just for a moment. Back when we were, when I was sharing with you about the, the instance where my friend took the, the sandwich over to the next person in the next car. That was a release of social convention in such a beautiful way. That man, I'm sure, never forgot. He never forgot that moment. And tuna never, never tasted the same again. So it, it brings us to really the meaning of, of Christmas at this time. Christmas is a multi-leveled meaning for people. Sometimes it's just about enjoying the lights. And sometimes it's enjoying the story of the divine birth. And sometimes it's about the light on the path of what it is that we are. And then sometimes it's a message about the internal process of the birth within each one of us. The innocence, the, the birth of the innocence of God within. I've been so privileged to experience that on a number of occasions in this lifetime. The Christ energy. Have you ever felt on occasions when you were totally up against it in your life and you were just hanging on and then you just had to let go and then something really beautiful shifted? That's the grace and the joy of God. This coming Wednesday night, we're going to celebrate that light and that presence. It's more than just a candle lighting service. What does that light represent in you? The birth of the light within you. Sometimes this, sometimes this work is a, is a struggle for me. I ask myself, what wants to be born in this moment with you? And I can bring stories and concepts and s illustrations. But there's something so precious behind that story itself. There's something so beautiful that I have felt been that has been ignited within my soul so many times on this path. And it's there. It's there within you, behind your struggle. It is the glory of God within you that is continually being born and that the Christmas story itself is an archetypal story of this continual birth of your life in God. That no matter what happens, you are
part of the divine. And the divine is continually desiring to awaken us to that great truth. And that if we allow ourselves to be in that divine flow, to accept that great inner birth, then our lives are truly blessed. I wish, my heartfelt desire for all of us in this Christmas season is to allow that birth to happen. Allow it to be born, allow it to grow, allow it to be the teacher, the healer, that which raises us from the dead, that which calls all aspects of our inner being into an alignment to live and move and have our being in this life as fully expressed human divine being. My, my prayer is for all of us to experience that good this Christmas time. Thank you.